Hello, beautiful people. It's Quinton from Hunters of Light, and today we are talking architecture with uh, Alessio Larufa. And he's kind of based uh, London, Joburg. He's recently moved across uh, to London, and um, he's talking to us from his uh, home in London about his uh, architecture work uh, that he's done, you know, uh, all over the place. So. Um, Alessio is a South African uh, architect and photographer. Um, he, he failed photography at college, um, self-confessed, um, but he got back into it thanks to uh, an iPhone and Instagram. So uh, I, I think that uh, iPhones and, and Instagram have certainly started to, or launched the careers of a lot of uh, photographers. So um, I think fantastic. <laughs> it's all go, go, go. Uh, Alessio, I'm, I'm going to hand over to you and um, let's uh, just take us through. In fact, uh, maybe give us a little bit of background of, um, you know, where it all started and, 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 and how you found yourself uh, shooting architecture. Cool. Um, so how... How it started for me was, um, like you said, with the iPhone and Instagram. And um, I was part of this group of Instagrammers that used to go around Joburg and just take photos, like street photos. And uh, we used to like central Joburg a lot, like in the CBD. And like there, there's a lot of like really cool buildings over there. So we ended up like doing like street photography and taking photos of buildings. And like I, I couldn't tell then, you know, that it was going to be a thing. But um, I kind of like uh, got into this Instagram thing quite a lot and used to do a lot of like this kind of photography. And um, I got to the point where I was like, listen, I need to specialize in something because, um, you know, like there's everyone's an Instagrammer. Like, you know, I need to differentiate myself. So um, I was toying with like a couple of ideas and I was like, right, you know, maybe I should shoot fashion. But then I, I took a serious, honest look at myself and I'm like, I'm actually an introvert. Um, I'd actually prefer to shoot something that doesn't talk back to me. Yes. That I don't have to talk to, um, you know, and like architecture, I think was like after, after really thinking about it was, was the perfect fit. So yeah, I just, um, I think that's what still off for me. Yeah. I think that's the thing, you know, you, if, if you're going to be doing uh, work that involves interpersonal relationships, um, you know, you, you need to uh, understand that it's going to involve a lot of hard work on, on, on the sort of emotional and mental side of things. Um, you know, whereas uh, uh, something that's inanimate, uh, you know, you can, you can sit and look at it for quite a while before doing anything. Um, you know, I mean, I know, models are paid to, uh, to, to look amazing and, and hold strange poses for, you know, uh, lengths of time. But um, I think there's, there's a point where they say, right, no, that's it. I'm not working with that guy again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so with it, say, uh, yeah, sorry, carry on. Uh, yeah. So the thing is like we're with, uh, with architectures, like I, I like to take my time and also like sometimes, you know, you really try and put all your focus in it and I can't like focus on two things at once. So I think just being able to focus on what's in front of me, that, that makes it a whole lot easier for me. Absolutely. And, and I mean, have you ever thought about doing uh, things like uh, product photography, um, interiors, that sort of thing? Um, so, so with the architecture comes interiors. Mm -hmm. um, product photography, um, it interests me. I think I also went the architecture route because initially I didn't know too much about lighting and I kind of like right. learned as I went along. I think um, with, with product photography, it, it you kind of like need to know about lights up front and it also like it's it's a more of a significant investment in lighting which i wasn't like comfortable with at the time absolutely and it, it it's something that um you know you 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 tend to add to as uh, as you go along and uh, it's yeah. absolutely a substantial investment that's uh, that's for sure um absolutely all right so i think let's um let's share your screen and um uh, and let's uh, check out some of your images. So I'm just going to share the screen there. Cool. All right, there we go. Okay, awesome. So this is um, Matra Quantity Surveys. This is actually the first gig that I got with a proper architecture company in South Africa. Um, so I'll tell you how I got that gig a bit later. Um, okay. So this is this is a um, it's just the headquarters of, of this company, Matra Quantity Surveys. Um, it's in Pretoria. It's just off one of the main roads um, and it's got well two different sides to it. The, the, the side that's facing the main road is a bit on the boring side. Um, I got there just before sunrise to kind of like get the nice soft light and stuff. But um, as I was shooting this, uh, these two ladies came past, obviously on their way to work, and um, so I submitted a whole bunch of images to the uh, to the client for proofing. And uh, she came back, and th this picture really jumped out at her. And I think this was her favorite of the set. It just kind of puts um, the building in context 
of like where it is, you know. So just looking at it without the people, it could just be a building anywhere. But these are two ladies walking on their way to work in a, in a suburban street. So she really loved it. And um, it was actually a really fun shoot. Yeah, it's quite nice to have uh, that sort of human scale and, uh, and context uh, as opposed to just that very clinical, uh, you know, building on a street somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, yeah, it really, it really does do a lot to put it into context and also to see how, well, okay, not in this case, but um, usually it's just to see how, how, the, how the architecture or the interior is being used as well. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, next up, this is also, um, this is not too far away from the first place, also for Boogerman and Partners. Um, I suppose they like my work on the first one. Um, <laughs> Which is always a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, so uh, this was for the the Gauteng employees uh, medical scheme. Also, a lovely building. Um, it was also taken taken at around sunrise. It's also nicer then because it's it's a bit quieter. Mm -hmm. um, there aren't there aren't too many people um, because shooting like one or two people in frame is okay, but shooting like ten or fifteen with no control over them gets a bit much. Absolutely. And then, and then you've got uh, delivery yeah. trucks and um, and all sorts that are going past and a car that's dropping someone else off. It's, uh, you know, the, the, when it gets busier, you, you're fighting not only the light, you're fighting uh, the traffic as well. Absolutely. And, and like I said earlier, like I can only concentrate on so much at one time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, this is this is just personal work. Um, so what I used to do when I was in Joburg is I'd wake up pretty early even during the week and round up a mate or a bunch of mates, however many people wanted to come with and just go out and shoot buildings in Santon. I mean, they've got some really lovely buildings going up there. Um, Catherine and West is one of the great ones. I, I love the curves on the facade of the building and the glass. And then also with the sunrise, like the little sun coming out in the corner there, like that warm sun on the left side really. Yeah, no, that's very cool. I, I think Santon is, um, is for me, is, it's such an amazing place to, to walk around and just see the, uh, the level of architecture that's, um, that's now, uh, you know, being put up there. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of office uh, commercial type buildings, but it's, it's, it's taken to a different level. It's not just a square uh, anymore. Now we, like with this one here, you know, you've got the waves in the side. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's more challenging and, and I'm really enjoying what, uh, what's going up there. Yeah, for sure. There's really some really like progressive buildings coming up and it's really great to see. Um, this is the mark by Boogerman and Partners. This this photo actually got me the gig with with them to start shooting for them. So okay. um yeah, so I put this up on Instagram. So what I usually do is is I just I take the photo, edit it as well as I can put it up on Instagram to the architects. And um it was it was a while after I put it up, and they actually came. Well, they actually approached me and said, "You know, we've got some buildings in Victoria. Would you be interested in shooting them?" And I was like, "Absolutely." Um, so when I go out and shoot um, in Santon or wherever, it's it's a bit cumbersome to go around with your tripod and Tulsa lenses and all the rest. So yeah. this is pretty early in the morning. Um, I think I had a sixteen thirty five on my camera, and I just shot a couple of brackets like free freestyle and merge them all together and here we go so i mean you don't need to always have like all the, all the fancy equipment to get the job done i think it's just you know being able to to execute which is quite important absolutely and also just having a, an eye for uh, for composition and um you know placement of uh, of objects i think that uh, that's also something that uh, that'll give you an edge over someone who possibly doesn't have that eye the, the, the photograph may be technically correct and accurate but it just doesn't have uh, the feel that um, that the architect might have been looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Bogdan Partners actually shot the the mark separately. They used another photographer, um, but they actually bought this image from me to use for one of their presentations, which was really cool. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, actually, if you look very closely, well, luckily you can't see it <laughs> if you're just looking at it casually. But actually, like part of the building was still under construction around the bottom, under that pineapple-looking right uh, structure. Yeah, so I, thankfully I managed to get far away enough from it. Yeah, I, I think everyone's just looking at the pineapple-like uh, structure. Um, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're they're ignoring whatever scaffolding that uh, that might still be at the bottom. 
yeah, you can't really see it. So thank goodness for that. Um, this one was also early mornings, um, early mornings in Santon. Uh, I actually love going in the early morning because sometimes uh, they tend to leave the lights on mm. in the building as well. Um, this warm orange light at the bottom with uh, going up the stairs and the outside area there is really, really cool. Um, yeah, I quite yeah, like also- the... The, the the sort of uh, tonality of it um you know there's there's that soft um uh, morning light that uh, that's obviously um in the sky but then even the building yeah. you know there's there's not a lot of uh, high contrast in it it's, it's it's got a really really nice feel to it i almost initially i almost thought that it was um, a rendering or something like that but um i just really oh, well. love it it's, it's really really nice yeah cheers thanks actually the this, this sky is, is a sky that i just dropped into it i ah. think the sky in the morning wasn't great but yeah, I do a couple of sky replacements when necessary. I think in the previous uh, that shot of the mark, uh, that's I think that's basically the same sky that I used in both in both okay. shots actually. Tricky. Yeah. No, that's very cool. I I love it. I think the, the there's a really nice balance about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I suppose what I uh, what I'd like to just jump into now is is uh, you mentioned equipment earlier. Um, yeah. What. Uh, what uh, and obviously camera equipment is not necessarily the be all and end all, but um, maybe just tell yeah. us the you know the camera body that you're using and um, and the lenses that uh, that you're using for the work that you do. Cool, I'm still old school, so I still shoot with a DSLR. Yeah. Um, so I use a Canon 5D Mark IV. Nice. Um, yeah, um, I've got a Tamron 2470 lens, uh, the Canon 1635 Mark II, the 2.8. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have the 24 mil f3.5 tilt shift, the Mark II, right? And and the 45 mil tilt shift as well. And uh, what uh, what percentage do you would you say that you use those tilt shift uh, lenses for this type of thing? I mean, is it is it 100 uh, percent of the time, or do you do you mix it up uh, a little bit and then and then retouch um, those verticals later? I think for uh, personal work, I'll just go run and guns. So it'll be like normal right. lenses, like zoom lenses. Yeah. But I think with, when, it, when it comes to client work, then I'll, I'll try and use the, the tilt shifts as much as possible. Because then we've also got time. Because the thing is, there's no autofocus on the tilt shift lens. <laughs> yes. So you've actually got to sit there and really um, make sure that your focus is on point. Also use something what's called a cam ranger. Yes. So, yeah, so that allows me to, to control my camera manually and also kind of just not touch it while it's uh, busy shooting brackets or doing what it needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've got a camera ranger as well, and I, I think I've got it for exactly the same reason. Um, the, the Just one thing to say, the, the 5D Mark IVs are amazing. Um, the, yeah. the mirrorless cameras uh, with, uh, with their focus assist and tilt shift lenses are for me a revelation because as you oh, wow. as you're busy adjusting the uh, the, the the tilt, um, you can see where the focus points you know where it's lining up. So let's say you've got it set to blue yeah. or green or whatever, you can actually see it as it as it uh, uh, you know uh, spreads across the building. It makes it so 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 much easier. Not that I'm wanting to That's get to, to buy a mirrorless camera, but <laughs> I, I tell you what, the, the first time that I did it for a, used it for a product shoot, I just thought. Oh my yeah. god! I can't believe it. This is this is easy because normally it's you know you yeah. got to focus in the center and then you got to you got to tilt it a bit and then you got to adjust it a bit and then you got to zoom in here, zoom in there. But this now the I, I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it just made it so easy. So whereas before oh, wow. it's quite a tricky um, you know exercise um, and well not tricky but cumbersome. Um, it now actually yeah. is, is is that much easier, which is for me is fantastic. Wow! Well, yeah. That's- Sounds amazing. <laughs> cool. um, this is also before um, before I really got any any gigs. So this I went out to uh, Santa at night. Thought I'd get something a little different. Um, yeah. yeah, the Discovery Building is really really cool. Um, a lot of people like this photo, but obviously, like we're looking back at it now, I'm a bit nit- nitpicky about it. Yeah, I think that flare from the street from the street light is totally out of control. But um, and I probably would have shot it a bit earlier with around like sunset. So we get some color in the sky. Right. But uh, yeah, but I love the lighting that's in the building as well. And uh, some of the, the light streaks and stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic when you, you've got a building that's got so much glass and, um, 
and and uh, when you've got it uh, at night, the, the the depth in that that it produces is uh, is for me really exciting. Um, you know, I remember when I uh, first photographed the that um, uh, building it uh, in Waterfall. Um, it was before anyone had moved in. Um, okay. there, there was no so there was no uh, office furniture or or things that had been stuck on the glass. And, um, and with the lights on, you could almost see all the way through it. Um, and it just, wow. it gives such an amazing uh, feeling to it. It's, you know, you, you're just looking at layer upon layer upon layer of, uh, of detail, which, which I really, really enjoy. So for me, looking at something like this, even though you've got, you know, the, the different colors, you've got a whiter and, 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 um, and more warm uh, colors, um, that just helps for me just to enhance that depth. I'm enjoying yeah. it. It's really nice. Yeah, it's also quite different because the thing is, you normally you normally see that discovery building during the day, and you don't really see the lights inside. You just see like uh, the glass and what's essentially a mirrored facade. So it is quite a different perspective on it. Actually, you know what could be quite interesting is if if someone, whoever can be you, um, would go <laughs> and and shoot it in a like a like a full day um, shot. So shoot some in the yeah. morning, shoot some in the afternoon. Or you know, and then and shoot some in in that sort of early evening, and then you have uh, on the on the left hand side it's the morning, and then in the centre it's midday, and then on the right oh, yeah. hand side it's uh, it's the night time. That that could be quite interesting. I uh, you know yeah. just thinking of uh, something like that. Absolutely, that would be super fascinating. Yeah, just to see how the building like changes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and the challenge of yeah. of of making it feel you know, normal, um, but across like a, a, the, the spectrum of a full day. I think that's, uh, yeah. that sounds like a challenge that I'm going to maybe have a look at shooting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so when I started my architecture photography journey, this was before I got married. Um, so I'd basically bring my camera with me everywhere and try and get photos wherever I could. This photo yeah. I actually took on my, on my honeymoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> We went, we went to this, this, this is a lovely little place called Glen Ogle. Um, it's out in Hainitzburg. Um, and this particular building is called the loft nice. and it's just absolutely amazing. And the thing is like, I tried to, to make, to take a photo of how it feels. So it, it's, a, it's, a, we actually went there. I think it was in May, so that, that would have been in, in winter. So mm -hmm. it, it just feels lovely and warm and cozy in there. They've got a nice fireplace inside. There's a braai outside as well. And, um, yeah, I just want to take a nice twilight shot and actually just uh, flex some some skills here. So I, th I think it turned out quite well. Then. Yes, lovely. Uh, Hannesburg itself is a, is a fantastic uh, getaway, um, you know, with all the forests and mountains and that sort of thing. And this this, yeah. this looks like it's just a a, a little uh, you know highway in a deep forest, you know, a break from from everything. Uh, it's lovely. Yeah. I really, I really like it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this next one, um, actually, so I got a I got a gig to shoot some other stuff at the Rand Club. It was uh, some of their marketing um, materials, which I did um, through another company, and um, I ended up going in there taking a couple of shots, and I really loved it. And I thought, you know, I'd have to come back and actually take some of my own shots because obviously they they've got a shot list. There's stuff that you have to shoot, but right. you know, I figured. I figured there's some other stuff that would be really lovely that I'd love to shoot for myself. So um, I got in touch with the, the marketing people and they said, cool, you, you're welcome to take some photos. Just, you know, so I did like a, an exchange. I said, look, I'd, I'd give you the photos for free. I don't mind. I just, I just want some access. And mm -hmm. they were cool. No problem. They, they added one or two shots to the list, which is fine. Yeah. But um, I, ended, I ended up uh, getting some really cool shots. So this one over here, um, actually got featured on the Accidentally Wes Anderson account. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. So it's actually, um, it's an account that, uh, that Instagram posts of uh, photos of like what looks like could be a set of, of, of a Wes Anderson movie. Okay. So, it, it, yeah, so it, it's all about like the symmetry and um, like the, the pastel colors and stuff. So this actually... I, I love the shot. I'm all about symmetry and like one point perspectives in my photography. And I loved how this managed to capture not only the floor that I was on, also the, the floor below it and also some of the, um, the ceiling detail just above there. Yeah, it can be quite dark inside uh, there if, you, if you're looking down to the bottom uh, level. So that's uh, yeah. a little bit of a challenge to, uh, to make sure that you've got those uh, shadows and highlights. 
Yeah, th- this was all ambient. Like uh, I normally shoot five five brackets, so, mm-hmm. I, so I managed to get like most of most of the range in there. And what what do you use to uh, to combine those uh, those different exposures? Do you just do it uh, straight Photoshop, or do you have something like um, uh, Infuse uh, that you use, or how do you how do you put those together? Um, I use the luminosity masks in Photoshop. I've actually got a plugin called Lumenzia. Yes, yes. Uh, which actually which actually makes uh, getting those luminosity masks easier. So you can you can change. Like you know how much those those masks capture, and I just play around with that. I find that uh, HDR just kind of makes it a bit muddy, mm-hmm. um, and uh, with the, lu- the luminosity masks, it, it gives more more of like what I'm looking for in a in a final image. Yeah, and you can just control, as you said, uh, you know, you can control how much uh, you use from from each of those. And I I think if you if you uh, are wanting to to have as much control as possible, that's that's definitely the way to go. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then I moved to London. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is um, the National Theatre on the South Bank. Um, it's a really, really cool old brutalist building. Um, this is a mate of mine that I brought along with me. And I said, listen, you got to walk past her and I'll, I'll just take the photographs. So he was kind enough to step in there for me. Um, also, yeah, freestyle. I think that's a, yeah, that's... That's the sky that I popped in there, but it also it's a really, really lovely building. Um, I've got another shot of it from the side. It's really, really amazing. Like Brutus that... architecture, yeah. Sorry. No, no, carry on. Uh, Brutus architecture is it's a very divisive kind of um, style of architecture. You either love it or you hate it. But no, I love it so absolutely. Bring it on. I, there's something for that that, and I have no idea why but for me brutalist architecture it, it speaks to me the uh, there was a um uh, a post that i found ages ago i think it was on on um uh, modern uh, my modern net or whatever it was but um yeah. it, it 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 showed the top 15 uh brutalist architectural buildings uh, in the world and i, I was just in awe i, I, I for me mm, love it <laughs> yeah they're amazing they're very bold and i really yeah i just as you said, it's just I love it. It's it's amazing. Um, this this was pretty cool to shoot. This was um, so London's got like a whole Olympic village where they had the Olympics in 2012, and uh, this is the London Aquatic Centre where they did all the swimming events. And yeah, it's a Zaha Hadid uh, building, which is amazing. I've never come face to face with one of these, and it was just mind blowing. Like mm. the architecture is absolutely incredible. Uh, I luckily had this lady walking past um, and she matched the, the glass pretty nicely. <laughs> yeah, the, the buildings in the, in the um, all the structures in the uh, Olympic Village are pretty cool. There's a velodrome where they, do, where they did the cycling as well, also got very like, similar lines. Lovely, lovely architecture. So the, the detail that's on the outside, I'm, I'm assuming is, um, is wood? Yeah. So yeah, I really like that. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, London's also got some pretty cool um, old architecture. I mean, some of the architecture here dates back two, three hundred years, which is pretty amazing. Um, also, I love the symmetry of this shot. It's uh, the University College of London. I actually took this shot. Um, I was on a walking tour with um, Reba. So it's the Royal Institute of British Architects. Mm-hmm. And before COVID, what uh, they actually do architecture walks around London. That's absolutely free. I think it's every second Wednesday of the month. Okay. And um, yeah, so I went on the one, and they brought us to some really, really fascinating places, and uh, managed to snap the shot on our walk. I know they um, uh, they do those uh, photo walks around. Um, well, I say they 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 do, but they, it may not be something that's. That's happening as much uh, at the moment uh, for for safety reasons. But you know, there's so many beautiful buildings uh, that are in Joburg that uh, uh, just are crying out to be photographed. Um, you know, I think it's a it's, it's probably a different situation for um, uh, for you on that side where you don't have to be yeah. as concerned with uh, you know your your safety and uh, you know showing off camera equipment as you you photograph uh, yeah. these types of buildings. Yeah, look, uh, I must admit I haven't felt. Um, like threatened or like my equipment, like the, 
that it can be stolen or anything in London. Like I can walk around with a with a camera quite freely, which is a really nice feeling to have. Um, so this is the Barbican estate. Um, so it's basically a, a large housing estate. Also, it's also like a brutalist housing estate because what happened was um, I think the area that it's in got bombed and they had to rebuild the housing estates. So what they did was they put together this brutalist masterpiece. It's actually a whole estate enclosed on, it's, it's about the size of a city block. Right. And um, it's actually very self-contained. They've got a theater, they've got a conservatory, and then they've got all these apartments and stuff. And there's like lots of, well, communal space out there. And the thing is, like anyone can just walk in and share the communal spaces. And okay, if you go to the theater, obviously you have to have bookings and stuff and all the rest. But it's a really, really lovely uh, space to walk around in and just admire. It's really, really cool. Oh, it certainly doesn't look like your typical housing estate. No, not at all. Not at all. That's what I love about it. And the conservatory is actually quite amazing. It's, I think it's over like two floors, but all like lots of double volume, like lots of beautiful, super impressive. Nice. Um, this was taken um, just as I was walking around our, our new neighborhood in London and saw this really interesting um, house. Uh, also, the sky has been replaced on this one. Um, yeah, the thing is with, with London, like a lot of the, the, a lot of the housing is very old houses that have been here forever. So like from about 200 years, okay, I won't say 200 years, maybe 120 years old to about 50, 60 years old. So the thing is when, when they get like really old, they, it becomes a, a conservation issue. So you can't really change the, the outside of the house much. But um, in extreme circumstances, you'll find someone's uh, torn down an, an old, well, torn down an old house and built like something really spectacular in its place. And um, this is one of them. It's really something different, like something you won't expect to see, like just every day. And the thing is, I love the way they use the space with that that block at the top there as well. Yeah, I, 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 I watch um, as much uh, grand designs as, as I can possibly get my hands on. Oh, and, cool, uh, yeah. And I always love the uh, the buildings where, you know, that where that was, uh, you know, a little side alley that led to yeah. uh, an open space. And now they've put in this uh, fantastic, uh, uh, you know, architectural gem um, in the middle yeah. of some, you know, <laughs> disused, uh, what would you call it, business zoned um, areas. Uh, and yeah. I, I just think it's it's lovely that you can uh, reuse the spaces like that. But as you say, with um, when it comes to you know grade listed uh, properties, uh, you know you you can't change anything. In, and 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 uh, if you are going to be uh, trying to renovate, you need to make sure that you know the lime mortar is the same, mixed with the same ingredients, etc. Yeah. Color of brick, uh, you know, which which doesn't really give you much flexibility, but. Um, you know, and I do understand that. Uh, I think in South Africa we've got a, a, a problem with just knocking it down, uh, regardless. And, and there's a lot of Art Deco buildings that have uh, have been um, lost uh, because of that. Um, so, but uh, you know, to see something like this pop out um, in a in a row of um, of houses or or a bit of a industrial area it always excites me. I think it's uh, it, it's really nice to 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 have that to challenge what uh, what's going on around it, the the area. Yeah, absolutely. So we so we've moved since we got to London. So we're in our second place now. The first place we were in, just diagonally across the road, we actually stayed. There was a house that was featured on Grand Designs. I can't remember what it's called. I think it was called Blackwater House or something. Okay. Or the, the name sounds familiar. Yeah, but it was it, it it was really really cool. It was nice to be able to just look out the 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 window every day and see this like lovely um, building. Yeah. And we also. Yeah, we also stayed uh, quite close to the Arsenal Stadium. So what they've done with um, Arsenal's old football uh, stadium, so they've moved to Emirates now, but what they did with the old stadium is they actually converted that to housing. Okay. So, yeah, so there's flats in there, and they've converted the pitch like this very like intricate garden and stuff. It's actually really, really wow. cool. You should look it up. That, yeah, sounds, I think it's that called, sounds fantastic. Yeah, you can actually Google it. It's Highbury Stadium Square. Nice. I mean that that yeah. uh, you know in just hearing that it's it makes perfect sense to to have um, you know apartments slash flats 
uh, built around a central courtyard. I mean, that's the the the, the premise for a lot of uh, developments. You know, you have these these places yeah. uh, built around a central courtyard, uh, bottom floor could be parking or or sort of uh, business space, shops, etc. Um, so, wow, yeah. what a fantastic uh, use of the space. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's an old like Art Deco building as well. So it's, well, on the one side, on the one grandstand, but it's really, really cool. It's really, it's really nice to see. Um, this is actually um, a detailed shot of the Scottish Parliament in Edinburgh. Um, we took a little pre-COVID vacay. And um, <laughs> this is actually... So this is just the one side. This is actually the uh, members of parliament. They have offices um, on site. So these these little um, parts on the wall actually it's they come out. So there's, it's actually meant to be a a reading corner for for the members of parliament when when they're in their offices, which is actually quite interesting. So like a little a little window seat. Uh... Yeah, yeah, like a little reading nook. Yeah, which nice. is really really cool. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very, very clever the way they've done. We actually went on a um, of walking tour in Parliament, and it's uh, actually very fascinating the way they put it together. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. This is Canary Wharf. This is like, this feels like a totally different part of London. It actually doesn't feel like London anymore. It feels like, in, like New York. A lot of like these high-rise buildings, which you don't really get many of in uh, central London. You, you've got a few, but obviously not as many. Um, also, I just love this, uh, this like hooded part above the big easy over here. It's really interesting. Um, I don't know if you can see just at the bottom right of it, there's a tunnel that there's a little tunnel bridge that goes across. It's actually, um, I don't know. There's a, there's an artist called Camille Walala and she did, uh, she repainted, well, she redid it on the inside, the artwork on the inside. And it's actually pretty, pretty incredible. Okay, the the, the that uh, part uh, underneath the the cover under the big easy looks a little bit like a um, the, the back end of a Battlestar Galactica uh, spaceship. Um, you know, <laughs> that's where yeah, that's where the exhaust the is going to come. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it's landed. Uh, you know, to forget uh, the heliports. We now have uh, you know a, a space station port. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So it's it's really cool. It's really different. Um, yeah. So that's the thing I, I like to look at, uh, look or look for rather, in my photography. Just uh, you know, like the different, the different architecture, the kind of stuff that you don't see every day. Right. Sometimes it is. It can be the thing that you do see every day, but you just don't see it in, in that way. You know. Absolutely. Um, this is the Baniel Two Energy Center. So. This I think this was originally a um, a tube station, but um, for some reason it didn't work out. And what they do is there's they've got vents from um, they go down into the into the tracks below, and those vents I, I don't I'm not 100 percent sure on on the on the logis logistics of this, but those vents the air that comes from there actually powers I think a, a hundred or a thousand homes around it wow. in London. Yeah, so that's actually pretty fascinating. So they've just repurposed this this uh, space. They've actually made it look nice as well. You know, it, it doesn't have to be like a boring thing. Exactly. Is that um, uh, uh, cladding uh, like a core ten steel, that sort of self rusting steel, or is it just something that that's uh, that's got that uh, uh, that that color to it? I think it's a it's a self rusting steel. Okay. That's really cool. I, I love what they've done with it. I mean, it, they could have easily just made it a dull, boring building, right. but they, they chose not to. Yeah. That was very nice. Um, this was, the Embar Montcalm was a hotel in London. Um, I shot this in December. Um, I figured, you know, I just need to get out the house. I need to shoot a little. And um, I went out to go shoot this. So before COVID, it was like a thriving hotel. It was doing really well. But... Um, when I actually walked past there after I shot it, like it's pretty pretty abandoned on the inside, which is quite sad. But it's also a really fascinating looking building because, like, even you'll see the windows on the sides are actually slant; they're not perfectly square. They actually like slant, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I'm mean, just looking at uh, those windows at the top. I mean, that, those are multi-story uh, windows. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's quite interesting to 
to break the the separation that you traditionally have with uh, with Windows uh, per story. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really, really fascinating. Even at the bottom, the way they've done uh, the glass bit, mm. right at the bottom, the way it's 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 also it's asymmetrical as well, which is also right. quite different and really really cool. Yeah. Um, and this one is one of my favorite buildings in London. Um, I think I saw it once or twice and I was like, damn, like, you know, where is this building? Because I was new to London. I didn't know how to get anywhere. I still right. struggle now. But um, I actually ended up riding past it on my bike one day and like, I'm like shouting at my phone. I'm like, hey, Siri, like record this location or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, Siri, um, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, actually, it, it's actually right around the, this photo was taken right around the corner from the previous shot. Um, I tried taking photos of this place before, and it just, the thing is, I think I approached it from the wrong angle because it's pretty impossible to get that all in one shot mm. when, you, when you're pretty close to it. And like the side streets just don't, just don't make it much easier. So I went there and, um, yeah, the weather was not great, but I suppose London weather. And I uh, went there and took my shot. Also, what I've noticed is uh, when I've moved to London, like I'm not, I'm not really doing sky replacements on my shots as much. I feel like we need to give it a bit of context also because we live in London and to be, to be perfectly honest, like the weather isn't always bright and shiny. Yeah. It is overcast. It is raining. So I just want to be a bit more realistic about the way the, the images are depicted. And I think one of the things of, uh, about uh, a built up area um, is that you, A, the, there's the context of, of the surrounding uh, buildings and infrastructure, but um, you know, you, you don't always have the opportunity to have the perfect angle um, with nothing between you and that uh, and that building. So I suppose the you know there's there's merit in 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 seeing the the architecture within the environment that it's in, um, and not always expecting to to get that perfect shot without anything yeah, else in, in the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then my next and final shot. Uh, this is just. Taken Hong Kong. Kong is nuts. It's just there are so many buildings and so many like well designed buildings. And like it's it can get quite overwhelming. Um this was just a shot on a, a bridge over this road that's in front of this guy. And I figured this guy is like perfectly placed here, it'll give like a nice sense of scale to it. And um yeah, just uh, the opportunity presented itself and took the shot. I think that I, I've never been to to Hong Kong, and um, I, from what I've, I've seen on 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 TV, the, there's there's such a fantastic juxtaposition of uh, of old and new and 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 massive and and you know skinny. Uh, it almost seems as though the, the 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 buildings are whatever you can fit in that space. Uh, that's that's what it's going to be. Um, and then yeah. just down the road, you've got this fantastic uh, glass and steel uh, structure. Uh, it must be fascinating to, you know, to shoot architecture there. It is, but the thing is, like a lot of the buildings are just so tall, like you can't you can't get a whole building in there. Unless, right. Like, okay, this is, this was a pretty unique situation, but um, yeah, the buildings are just so tall. You're gonna have to like focus on details or something. Right. Right. There's also yeah. There's also it's there's a, a I think there's a viewing deck on um, Hong Kong Island. We actually go up the mountain. Um, and I think you normally go, well, we went in the evening, but that actually gives you a view over Hong Kong, so you can actually get like a more, a better view then. Right. But yeah, it's also like super tricky there. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, you said that was the, that was your last slide, that one? Yeah, that was okay, the one. Yeah. Cool. I'll just um, put us next to each other there again. Um, what, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, it's very cool sure, to, to see your, your images um, and, and hear how you approach them, etc. Um, what, uh, cool. what I did want to find out, um, uh, I think you mentioned it uh, early on, was um, you know, uh, finding clients and, and, and approaching clients to, to get to work. What, what is your sort of process? I mean, you, you were saying that um, you, know, you photographed the buildings and then reached out to the architect. Uh, is that something that um, that you find works for you, or or is there a, a way that you find um, works better for uh, for getting new clients? Um, I th I think that was just a fluke with uh, Bookman and Partners finding me. Um, I was pretty lucky. 
uh, before that, I'd pretty much try and shoot anything I could. Like I said, I was taking photos on my on my honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, anything to build a portfolio and, and also just, um, I don't know, I think like approaching people and saying, listen, I'll shoot your space for free, whatever, just for access, and then they can use the photos. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been a bit tricky. I came over here and the thing is, London's a bit on the expensive side. So I, got, I went and I got a job. So I was working for a property uh, real estate company. Right. Um, until recently, I actually quit my job because I want to do um, architecture and interior photography over here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose that uh, if if you if your base is um, is the UK, uh, you know, you've got access to or easy access, quick access to almost the whole of Europe uh, to be able to go and do jobs, Absolutely. etc. I think that that must be um, quite a good uh, staging point uh, for you to you know, to be able to do that and have quite a, a nice variety of uh, of images. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think now with Brexit that just got passed, it's going to be a bit trickier. Yeah, but a little bit more. Yeah, just a little. But um, yeah, but I think uh, what my plan of action is going to be on the side is also just I, I try and engage a lot on Instagram mm -hmm. um, with architects, even other photographers. Um, and it's always I think the thing is just building up a network on the side because I don't really know many people on the side. And also uh, what I've done with uh, previously, like I mentioned, is just go take photographs, tag, um, tag the architects and stuff. Right. But I was thinking of even, I was thinking of even like printing that out on a postcard, sending it off to the architect and say, listen, you know, I took this cool photograph of your place, just sign it with my details, whatever. And then, yeah. you know, see how it goes. Absolutely. Love to shoot the rest of your portfolio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very cool. Um, and, and yeah. lastly, what, uh, what advice would you give, um, aspiring architecture, someone, architecture photographers, someone who um, they've got a camera um, they've got, you know, a, a basic wide, uh, wide angle lens um, and, and they, they really want to shoot architecture um, going forward. What, what advice would you give them? Um, I think try and go and shoot like as much different architecture as you can. Um, I think after a while you'll kind of gravitate to what you, towards what you really like. And I think from there, like you'll, you can specialize in that in that kind of architecture. And I think that's when you can like approach, you can be very targeted in your approach towards like clients and stuff and say, listen, this is what I shoot. I specialize in X, Y, or Z. And um, yeah, I think when clients know that you specialize in their niche, I think that helps a lot as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, we've heard it time and time again with the uh, guests that we've had on the Hunters of Light, where, you know, you, you need to shoot what you want to shoot. Um, you know, yeah. because when people see the, the, the results that they want for their product, they will gravitate towards you to, to shoot it. Um, so yeah, I mean, absolutely fantastic advice. Uh, you know, if you, if you, if you love a particular style, uh, you know, if there's particular buildings you like, you know, maybe, you know, try and push it so that there isn't into an area where, where there isn't a lot of, uh, photo photographic, uh, interest, um, you know, with regard to shooting the building, there there may be a, 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 a super niche that uh, that people haven't absolutely uh, you know explored it yet, and you may find yourself getting quite a lot of work within that. Um, so yeah, listen, thank you very much. Uh, it was absolutely sure. fantastic Perfect. to to chat to you. Great insights, um, and um, I really appreciate your your time. So yeah, really thank you yeah. very much, and, and good luck Great. with uh, with uh, your your building your portfolio over there and um, and getting new clients. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on uh, Hunters of Light. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much. I hope to chat to you uh, a couple of months time and uh, you know, see uh, what new buildings you've got uh, in your portfolio. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thanks very much. Cool. Hey. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.